only annoyances of using the internet in the modern age, and the very first world problem of cookie warnings. This annoying message at the bottom of the screen telling me I'm going to be tracked just by using this website, and in some cases I do have the ability to reject said cookies. If you're clicking into the cookie settings, which not many sites seem to have that feature, despite the fact they should. Something that really winds me up, and in this video I'm just going to talk a little bit about this and vent some of my frustration, and hey, maybe people agree or just not bothered by it. So the cookie law explained, so it started as an EU directive in 2011, to give individuals the rights to refuse cookies that reduce their online privacy. So it was designed to protect online privacy by making consumers aware of how information about them is collected and used online, and to give them a choice to allow it or not. Yes, and this only uh, seems to mention about cookies and no other forms of tracking, nothing like HTML5 canvas, looking at other factors like the sound output, the fonts, screen size, battery usage, geolocation, yes, none of this is mentioned, it's simply just cookies, the small stateful files that you have on your computer that show what your current session is on a website. And there was an article on the register back in March 2019, cookie walls, meaning you can't come in unless you eat them, also known as tracking walls, are some of the most severe strategies used by companies to slurp folks' data and stalk them around the web. Essentially, those websites that employ them throw up a notification page which prevents netizens from accessing any of the website's contents unless they agree to tracking. The, uh, I can't pronounce that, but AP issued a statement on topic yesterday off the back of what it said were multiple complaints of people who had been unable to access websites they wanted after they refused cookies. Under the GDPR, the AP said organisations need bases for processing personal data, and if they want to use tracking cookies or other software, they need to request permission from users. It noted that it wasn't objecting to software required for proper function of a website or general analysis of visitors to the site, but more thorough monitoring of visitors needed permission. This permission must be set out as in the GDPR completely freely given, by contrast cookie walls where you can't get access without giving it, permission is not freely granted because there isn't a genuine choice. And there is mention about the Washington Post which got slapped on the wrist of a fine from the UK ICO after a complaint that the only way to switch off tracking cookies and ads was to pay $9 a month. So how does it look now? <laughs> well, apparently still the same. Premium EU ad-free, $9 every four weeks, but no site advertising or third-party ad tracking. You don't get a choice, so it's still the same. I have to say though, when I browse to websites, I am telling them that I do not want to be tracked. This feature of all modern browsers, the Do Not Track, which in Firefox and Chrome-based browsers you have the option of turning on or off, less so on Microsoft's browsers, but yes, you have the option of saying, I do not want to be tracked. And how many times can I think that I've ever seen this obeyed in the however many years it's been around? Well, maybe two or three times I've had the message from websites saying, yes, we notice you have that enabled and we're not going to track you. Otherwise, it just seems to be completely ignored. A very well intended feature that seems to be pretty much pointless and completely abused. But my alternative is to deny access to all cookies and only allow by exception. Gets a bit annoying sometimes, but hey, this is how I have my main browser set up. So just to look at a few examples of what happens when you actually click to go into the settings on the cookie pages, because I wonder how many people actually do this, or whether they just mostly click OK, or ignore the thing altogether. On the BBC, how do I take control of my cookies? And buried three clicks in, how do I change my BBC cookie settings? I read the full privacy, what are we on to now? Four clicks. Um, great load of information, still haven't actually found the actual settings. Oh, come on. I'm starting to think I'm missing some information here by the uh, way I'm actually disabling cookies. Yeah, I've clicked around quite a few pages here, and yeah, basically I just seem to be getting sent around in circles. So let's look at something else, the Telegraph. Cookie settings. Well, that one's easy. Opt out of all. 
If only it could be that simple, and to be fair, in some cases it is that simple. Another new site, the sun. Cookie settings. Strictly necessary cookies, always active. Okay, but what cookies are strictly necessary? Measurements, well, actually it does say about first party being allowed. And here we are, we get the options of disabling them. We do have to change some of the settings for each page. They're not too bad. ZDNet, and this one is awful on the mobile browser. I think it, it fills the whole page up with a cookie warning and allows you to view about one line of text. And I'll do that as well. I, I will just completely refuse to click this uh, agree or disagree button and just actually try and view the site without giving consent. I'm sure they're still tracking me regardless. Manage settings. <laughs> oh, well, it's detected I've actually got cookies blocked. But Okay. Opt out of all. Well, that's good. Supermarkets, privacy policy, oh dear, personal data we collect, blah, blah, blah. Well, a lot of information. Did I see a way of actually disabling it? No, you just can only accept and close and read the policy, and but you can't seem to actually deny the settings. As the, oh, where's it gone? There it is at the bottom of the screen. This site uses cookies to help work out and improve your experience by personalizing services for you and tailoring ads you see on here and on other, other websites as well. Oh great, yeah, third party tracking. You can find out more about the cookies, but if you carry on browsing, we'll assume you're happy to use them. Well, I'm not. So there's no obvious way of actually disabling them. Cookie walls. What was it we're not allowed? Oh, your right to refuse cookies. You can refuse cookies by activating the relevant settings on your browser. Oh, so you're making it my choice and my settings to disable them. Oh, nice. What does Aldi look like? Well, pretty much the uh, same as the others. All the information about the data, no easy way of uh, disabling it. But I noticed there that they were saying how I could make a complaint. Well, perhaps I should. Withdrawing consent, uh, well, I don't see an easy way to do so. Opting out, okay, opting out. You can ask us or third parties to stop sending you, oh, marketing communications. Yeah, it's not cookies though. Well, okay, you've given me the information to make a complaint and maybe I will just make a complaint because I can't refuse consent. Let's go to the opposite end of the spectrum with supermarkets. Well, let's go really up market. Cookie policy from Waitrose. This is a bit more detailed because it actually tells you how long these cookies are going to last for. And a couple of these were really long time. So we've got Google Tag Manager, two years, five years. So oh, this is, uh, that's gonna be a first party cookie. Oh no, sorry, Adobe Analytics. So five years for Adobe Analytics cookies to be on like a system. Does that sound like a long time to be looking at what I'm doing? Five years. Oh, 10 years for this one for my eight. 10 years you want to track me for? Do you think my computer's going to be around for 10 years? Actually, it might be. But do you think this operating system is going to be on there for 10 years? Yeah, probably not. Well, actually, what am I saying? Probably it won't be on there for 10 years because it won't be supported for 10 years. So eBay, well, the default option is just to accept, but what happens if we go into settings? All of a sudden they say no if I go into settings. Oh, very nice of them. And I do notice that happens quite a bit, that as soon as you go into settings or inquiring about the consent, they just go, oh, oh, you don't want to give consent. That's okay, we're not going to take it. But if you were to click accept, then they're just going to track you. But hang on a minute, what is this? Requires opt-out. Requires opt out, requires opt out. What is all this? These third party sites that I've got to opt out of. And how many are there? This is ridiculous. This is unreal how many third party sites you're using. I'm just scrolling quickly. I'm not even reading them. Website improvements. Oh, look at this lot. So although it looks like they're being denied, it does say you've got to opt out of them. Do you think I'm going to go onto every one of those sites in this list and do the opt out? <laughs> no chance. Google advertising. Come on, this, this is pretty egregious, really. Like, how many 
different third parties are using. I'd love to actually know how many are there. That's just horrific. What's it got to be here? Quite a few hundred? Thousand? I don't know. Or some of them repeated. Oh, they may be repeated. Yeah, yes, they are actually. They're, some of them are, are repeated. So anyway, there's more than a handful anyway. VK, or message at the bottom, by continuing to browse, you can send to use from our cookies. You can read the cookie policy here. I just thought I'd mix it up a bit. This is a site I don't use, but um, yeah. A Russian website. No way of actually disabling the cookies. Withdrawing consent. What about the government, the UK government? They've got to do it right. They've got to set a good example, haven't they? Find out more. How cookies are used? Um, no. You're just telling me how long they're going to last for. Uh, but no way of actually disabling them. Can I make a complaint to the ICO that the government can't even get their cookie settings right on their website? Anyway, and so these things go on. Um, this video is already getting quite long, isn't it? And it's pretty much me just ranting about it and showing how these things are, really. Um, on right move, we do get the option to disable them. Oh, but again, it's various sections. There's very few like ZDNet. As soon as you go in, you're just going to deny everything. You seem to have to go down all these different options. Got to love the BT one. That if you have cookies disabled, you go to edit site settings, you deny consent, I don't want that, I don't want that. Press OK, and oh, we go back around again. <laughs> I guess you wanted to save that in the cookie, didn't you? And lastly, what about Yahoo? Well, they seem to go off through this website, Oath, 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 o Oath, I think it sounds funnier. There are a bunch of Oaths. Well, it looks like I can't change the settings because cookies are disabled, but... Um, I think, can we, oh, you can change your settings by, you can change your settings by visiting the partners tab in your privacy dashboard. So, I might have these settings. It's difficult to see, it's not exactly obvious. So quite a difference between the various websites. Some doing it right by allowing you the option to deny consent to cookies, some making it really easy, like ZDNet, opt out all, that's nice and easy. Some making it particularly difficult, like eBay, giving you the choice to opt out, but insisting you go to a long list of websites. And for what? If you clear the cookies in your system, then you've just got to do it all over again. We could just keep clearing the cookies out. So yeah, there's ways of denying these things on the browser, but the fact that the EU insisted we must be given the choice or the right to online privacy, it's just kind of a mockery, this whole thing is. But that was my little rant about cookies. Thanks for watching. See you all later.